Hi, my name's Alan Smith. In this webcast, we'll explore the celebrity detection features of the Azure Cognitive Services Computer Vision Service using Python. I'll demonstrate how we can call a Computer Vision API and how we can use the celebrity's domain-specific model to detect celebrities. There'll be a quiz so you can compete against the service and see how many celebrities you can identify. And we'll also explore if the service can be fooled by using a large number of images of Elvis impersonators. The advantage of using the computer vision service in Azure is that it provides us with pre-trained models. If you want to train your own model for celebrity detection using PyTorch or Keras and TensorFlow, it's going to be challenging. You're going to have to find an appropriate data set, uh, spend a lot of time training the model, and tuning and refining the model. Well, Microsoft's already done all of this research and generated a model for us that we can use. And the models in the computer vision service are being continuously updated. So the accuracy of those models is going to improve over time. So there will be an optional quiz during this webcast. I've taken 10 images of the celebrities here from the Google search folder. And these 10 images are going to be appearing periodically through the webcast. So if you want to, you can write down the names of any of these celebrities that you recognize. And then we can run these images through the computer vision service and compare the scores. So this is the project that I'm using. You can call the computer vision service as a REST-based service, but I've actually imported the Python computer vision client. If I type pip list, you can see the packages that I've installed. We've got the Azure Cognitive Services Vision Computer Vision and Azure.common installed here, along with a few other packages. I've also got Pillow installed because I'm going to be working with images. OK, I'll take a quick run through the code. I have got another webcast on using the Computer Vision Service in Python that runs through the basics. We are going to need to authenticate with a service, so I've got my subscription key and the endpoint for the service that I'm using. And this is the instance here in the Azure portal. Once you've created the instance, you can find the endpoints in the keys and endpoints section. And I always regenerate these after I've done a webcast so that the ones I'm displaying are not going to be valid. I'm currently running on the free pricing tier that allows 20 calls per minute or 5,000 calls per month. And in the overview section, I can go to monitoring. And in the monitoring section, we can see how many calls we've got remaining in this price tier. So you don't have to pay to use the service if you're using it in low usage scenarios. So we're creating a new computer vision client, specifying the endpoint and the subscription key. I'm then defining a couple of uh, folders here. I've got this celebrities Google search folder, and this is what I'm going to be using for the images. So within the folder, I've got 764 images of uh, celebrities. And what we're going to do is to send each of these images to the computer vision service using the celebrity detection capabilities and see which celebrities it can identify. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting a list of the files in that folder. I'm also generating a folder where we can place any images where we didn't detect a celebrity and creating that folder if it does not exist. Then I iterate through the files. I'm going to construct the full path of the file and then also use Pillow uh, to actually load this file so we can draw the uh, rectangle on the actual face if we have detected a celebrity. We can then open the file as a stream and call the computer vision service client. Now when I'm calling it, I'm calling analyze image by domain in stream, passing in celebrities and passing in the image stream. Now, if we do have celebrities uh, in the actual response message, I'm going to draw a, a bounding box around those. So what I'm doing here is just extracting the uh, pixel positions uh, for that bounding box. And then I'm drawing a rectangle on there and also drawing some text on with the name of the uh, celebrity. And what I'm also doing is I'm doing a bit of a drop shadow here. So I draw it in black and then shift the pixels by one and draw it in uh, red. And then uh, once we've modified the image, we can save it in a folder for that appropriate celebrity. So what I'm going to do is to create a folder for that particular celebrity name if that folder does not exist, and then we can save the image in the folder. And if we haven't detected a celebrity, then I save it in the unknown folder. Now, some of the images may be malformed, or we may get a problem calling the service. So if we do get any exceptions, I'm going to display those in the console. OK, so let's test this and see how it works. So you can see it's going through these images, and you can see the detected celebrities and the prediction percentages. But now it's throwing lots of exceptions. Now the reason this is happening is I'm using the free tier. That only supports 20 calls per minute. So what's happening here is it's telling us that we've exceeded the rate limit for the current subscription on the free pricing tier, and it's asking us to retry after a certain amount of time. 
So we've got a couple of options here. I can either pause the application for three seconds every time we process an image, or as it's suggesting here, we can increase the rate limit by going onto the paid tier. Now it's gonna be tedious uh, waiting three seconds for each image to process. So I'm gonna go into the pricing tier, select standard and click select. And that was updated successfully. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the alt folder and I'll delete all the images so we can have a fresh start while we're making the test. Okay, so let's run this again. You can see again, it's running through the processing of these images. And we can see it's detecting quite a lot of celebrities and the certainty seems to be quite high. So I am actually now paying to use this service. If we go back to the pricing tier, you can see that it costs 8.74 Swedish krona for a thousand calls. So this is about one dollar or one euro. So it's still processing the images. I'll pause the recording until this is complete. Okay, so we've finished processing those images. Let's take a look at the results. So in the outbound folder, we can see that a number of folders have been created. So here we've got 50 Cent detected with a 99% certainty, and also Tyler Swift has been detected with a 99% certainty. And you can see that the boxes have been drawn around these. So this image will also have been copied to the Taylor Swift folder as well. We've got an image of Aaron Paul here. You can see these images are quite low resolution, and the reason is they've been generated from the thumbnail images on a Google image search. But it was still able to identify the uh, celebrities there. Going into Adam Sandler, you can see there's a couple of photos there. We've got Alexis Bladell. Arnold Schwarzenegger's been detected there. A couple of images of Bill Gates, a young one and a current one. We've got Boy George. Jay Guevara. Several images of Emma Watson. And we've also got Dame Judi Gench identified here. Though it's only picked out two of these. I'm not sure if these were other um, celebrities in the photo or not. So scrolling down, I can locate the unknown folder. And we can see that there's 310 images where celebrities were not detected. Some of them, like this one, it's going to be challenging because it's not a full photo. Others are quite low resolution. And I'm guessing, uh, because these are thumbnail images, that it's going to be very challenging for the API to actually pick up on this type of uh, resolution. So I don't know if there's any celebrities that you've detected. And some of these images do seem to be doctored, so it's not surprising that it hasn't detected the celebrity here. Okay, so if you've been taking part in the quiz, I'm just gonna delete everything in the outbound folder. And we'll go to the quiz section. What I'm gonna do is just change the name of the path in Visual Studio, and specify that we're gonna be using the quiz folder as the input folder, and let's run this. So this should be fairly quick. Uh, there's only 10 images, and you can see the names of these celebrities that have been detected. And going to the outbound folder, we can look at the results. So I'm not sure what order they appeared in the quiz, but we've got this image here, which was Adam Sandler. We've got Cameron Diaz, Morgan Freeman, Nick Jones, Tamar Baxton, Taylor Swift, and Whoopi Goldberg. In the unknown folder, we've got three celebrities here that were not detected. So I wasn't able to identify these celebrities, so please let me know in the comments if you do recognize them. So we can see that the computer vision service got seven out of 10. That's 70% or 0 0.7 as AI developers will say. I'd be interested to know if anybody was able to beat that number. Now, I was very skeptical when I first saw the celebrity detection service. What I was thinking was, you know, how does it detect celebrities? What happens if there's somebody who looks like a celebrity? Is it going to classify them as a celebrity? And how good is it going to be? Is it going to be possible to fool the celebrity detection service? So one of the most well-known celebrities is Elvis Presley. And Elvis is probably one of the most impersonated celebrities as well. So what I've done is a Google image search for Elvis impersonators. And I've got 665 images here that have come back from the results of this, this search. And you can see that there's a large number of different Elvis impersonators that we've got here of varying quality. Some of them do look like Elvis. Others, maybe not so much. So what we're gonna do is to run these images through the computer vision service and see if we can fool it with Elvis impersonators. So I'm gonna copy the name of the path drop back to Visual Studio. We can just replace that there and I'll run the application. 
So it's detected Sean Clutch. Detected Sean Clutch again. Val Ramos is coming up. Andrew Portelli. And you can see that the majority of these images are basically not being detected as celebrities. So they will come up in the unknown folder. I'll pause the recording until it's complete and we'll go back and examine the results. OK, the processing is complete now and we can look in the outbound folder. One of the celebrities that was detected is Andy Kaufman. If you've seen the film Man on the Moon or heard the song by R.E.M., you'll be aware that Andy Kaufman used to be an Elvis impersonator. We've got Bruno Mars here. And sure enough, Bruno Mars did an Elvis impersonation back in 1991. We've got Donald Trump. So this is either a fake image or Donald Trump did used to be an Elvis impersonator. Sean Clush was detected early on. And sure enough, Sean Clush is a famous Elvis impersonator. We've got Andrew Portelli here. And you can see that Andrew is also an Elvis impersonator. It has detected Lily Allen and David Harbour. I think this was just a stray image uh, that for some reason ended up in those search results. And we've got Elliot Pilar. And Elliot is a well-known Swedish Elvis impersonator. A few of them have been detected as Elvis Presley. However, I think that these are actual photos of Elvis Presley. And these images may well have appeared in the Google image search. So if you can actually verify if these are real or fake Elvis Presleys, please let me know. So after running this demo, I was a lot less cynical about the capabilities of the celebrity detection in the computer vision service and the computer vision service in general. I think it's great uh, that you can send in these images and we're not able to fool it with an Elvis impersonator, but it's actually able to detect uh, the names of the Elvis impersonators and be able to identify them, even though some of them may be not very well known and not people who we probably classify as being celebrities. So just to summarize this, the computer vision services in Azure Cognitive Services provide a very easy way of being able to use pre-trained models. There are a couple of disadvantages, however. If you're using the standard pricing tier, it's okay when you're only testing a few images. But if you have a really, really large library of images, or if you wanted to do celebrity detection on frames within a video, then it's going to start to get quite expensive. Also, if you are doing video processing, the latency is going to be a problem because you're calling out to the service for every frame and that could slow things down. However, there is the possibility of being able to run some of these cognitive services on premise in containers, but I've not really explored the pricing model of doing so. And the celebrity detection is just one of many features we've got in computer vision. So feel free to check out my other webcasts if you want to explore the functionality further.